Wow, look out! Somebody just got an insurance claim. That's a big rhino. We don't have them here in the US. That'd be great if we did, but you can imagine that lots of rednecks would probably shoot them. So it's probably a good thing they don't live here. But we do have lots of unique, strange, weird, and dangerous animal species here in the US. Some of them are tiny and some are cute. You probably haven't heard of many of them, but you will after this. So join me as I explore the crazy parts of America and we get to know the strangest, weirdest, most wild animals in America. Animals, 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 animals. Let's say you're driving your motorcycle out in the desert, minding your own business, and bam! Out of nowhere is a dangerous and intimidating Gila monster. You'd better give him his distance because they're super fast and they'll jump on you and bite you. No, they don't run fast, maybe one mile an hour, but they are venomous. One of only two venomous lizards in the whole world. Gila monsters are related to the fearsome Komodo dragon. You can find them in southern Arizona and in some parts of Nevada and California. You might actually never really see one since they spend 95% of their lives in their underground burrows. A group of these guys is called a lounge. That's because they gather in groups to lounge around in the sun. In fact, besides eating, the only time they ever come out of their holes is to sit in the sun. That means they like to quarantine. They live to be about 25 years old and they eat meat. Stuff like bird eggs and teeny tiny little baby rabbits. Will they kill you? Probably not. Their bite's painful, but the poison isn't deadly, unless many of them attacked you at once. Then you might die. There's no antivenom, and the only way to get it off you if it does bite is to pry its mouth open with something like a stick. Ugh. Whoa! This thing looks like its face exploded. This is a star-nosed mole. They live in the New England states and along the eastern seaboard. They like living in marshes, mostly. They're about the same size of a hamster, but they probably don't want to run on wheels. Here they are in a nest. That's not social distancing. Break it up, six feet apart, everyone. Scientists say these guys are truly amazing and remarkable animals. Why? First off, they're the fastest eaters in the country. Within two tenths of a second, they see a bug, decide to eat it, and then eat it. That star organ on the mole snout is the most sensitive organ of all mammals. They're actually blind, so they use that weird looking nose hand thing to see. Their nose appendage has 22 tentacles, kind of like an octopus. They can smell underwater and their front legs act as shovels. Apparently they're good at detecting earthquakes. Maybe they should live in California then. So I drew this thing and I'm trying to find one, but I don't know where to look. There's one! That's a luna moth, or a lime green moth. How pretty. They live on the eastern half of the US, up to where the prairies start. That's cause they like trees. These things are deadly. <laughs> no. They're not. They're nice. Luna moths are typically about 5 inches large, but can be up to 8 inches big. Wow! Those spots on its wings are to deter predators like birds, who see those spots and think the moth is watching them. This is what they sound like. Here's a picture of its face. It looks like it needs a barber. And see its mouth? That actually doesn't even work. They eat a ton of leaves as caterpillars, and then they make a cocoon, and then they're reborn as a moth. Then they die about a week later because they lose their ability to eat once they have their wings. So it's a moth without a mouth. The only reason they even exist is to reproduce. So they're born, have sex, and then starve. Sounds like a woman I knew in Los Angeles. Okay, that's not nice. She has feelings too. Oh look, it's a Cruspidori Sour Bee. Or a Cruspidori Sour Bee. A Cruspidori Sour Bee. Anyways, it's a freshwater jellyfish. It looks mean. It's not. This thing came from China, but now it's here. There's a lot of weird, dangerous things that come from China, right? These guys are about an inch long, and although those stingers look like they'd hurt, they really can't cause harm to us because their little stingers can't pierce our skin. They can usually be found in late summer in calm and shallow lake waters, but sometimes you don't see them at all. They seem to like it in Wisconsin a lot, but they can be found in many freshwater lakes in the northern part of the country. Let's call somebody in Wisconsin and ask if they've ever seen one. Hello? Hey, hi. Um, I'm doing a video on strange animals and there's one in Wisconsin and I'm wondering if you've ever seen it. It's called a Craspidutchy Sorabi. What? Cra it's a Craspidacusta Sorabi. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> she didn't know what I was talking about. That's funny. Good grief, is that a gar? 
Oh God, gars are wicked. These giant fish can grow over 10 feet long, Jesus. And they're the largest freshwater fish in North America. They're typically found in areas in the South like Mississippi and Alabama, but you can find them all the way into places like Nebraska and Illinois. There are seven types of gars, but the most well-known are the alligator gars and the long-nosed gars. This thing looks like a dinosaur. They have sharp, tough scales and really pointy teeth. They eat other fish and turtles and frogs and pretty much whatever else they want that's smaller than them. Like an alligator, they float near the surface and ambush their prey. And coincidentally, their only natural enemy is the alligator. If you catch one of these guys, be careful. They have a unique ability to survive in low oxygen environments and can even live two hours outside of water. So that dead gar that you caught might not be a dead gar yet. And don't eat their eggs because they're poisonous. There have been no reported gar attacks, but I bet somebody in a swamp in Georgia had their toe bit off by one at least one time, right? Since we're on the whole water animal theme, we should then talk about lamprey eels. This thing looks like a real pain in the butt. They're technically fish, sorta. They don't have jaws, but they can latch onto you or actual prey using rows of teeth where they will then suck your blood until you die or until you just pull it off. These aren't native to the freshwater interior lakes of the US, but they're there now. That means somebody probably took some from their native Atlantic Ocean habitat and dumped them into the Great Lakes, which is where they live and are now thriving. Now they're destroying fish populations in the Great Lakes and it's giving wildlife folks headaches trying to contain them. Who would do that? Like throw that thing in a lake? When they lay eggs, they lay a lot. Lamprey lay a hundred thousand of them at a time and then they die. You would too, cause that's a lot of laying, mister. People on the other side of the Atlantic eat them, yuck. They're slimy, almost two feet long, and they weigh about 13 pounds. So you're pretty much aware when this sucker sucks on you. They rarely do, since they like cold blood, but they have been known to grab onto people and hang on, which would be absolutely terrible to go through. Oh, hell no. This is a Bigfoot. They live in Washington and Oregon and in other states with mountains and trees. They eat sugar cubes and chips and dip and like watching TV. They're hard to spot, but can be domesticated. Now we mentioned African animals earlier and this thing looks like it would live in Africa. It does, but it also lives here too now. This is a Gemsbok or African Oryx. It's an antelope. Way back in 1969, a bunch of hunters brought some over to New Mexico and then let them go so that they could just find them all over again and then shoot them just to cut off their horns. Ah. What was once a herd of a hundred is now numbered in the thousands in New Mexico. That's because there aren't any lions in New Mexico, so they don't have any natural predators. It's been 50 years since they were first brought here, and now they're being monitored to see how they will affect the ecology in the area. This is what they sound like. They eat plants and they're active at night. They live to be about 20 years old. Bye Gemsbach and your little baby. Hey, look over there, under my exploring Jeep. Is that a Nutria? It is, how lucky we are. Also called koi poo, these were brought to the US by fur farmers who had no idea the damage these things would do to our infrastructure. Like they ruin our ditches and levees by digging into them. Kind of like beavers, they're considered a rodent. Besides eating native plants, they also piss off farmers by eating crops like corn and beans and rice. And they eat a lot too. They can be found all over the South and in Washington and Oregon for some reason. Like somebody picked them up and took them up there. How did they get all the way to the West Coast? They're about a foot long and their tails are about a foot long too. Now they don't attack people, but one woman in a Louisiana Walmart said she was injured when a nutria ran across the aisle she was in, causing her to run over her own foot. And that woman probably needs to get out of the house more. Apparently, the Walmart workers had named the nutria Norman. They are really quite amusing little animals. They're gentle and they're very intelligent. They mew like kittens when they're quite young. Mrs. Castle, who lives near Great Yarmouth, has, since the 1930s, encouraged Koi Pew to live in her lake. Now, a great many of them have been killed in the anti-Koi Pew campaign. I don't think it's right to exterminate the whole lot. We enjoy them very much. And we are terribly sorry now that they've been practically eliminated. We think it's very wrong. Louisiana has a big nutria infestation, and apparently they're telling Louisiana people to eat them, like as many as they want, actually. The state even provided a list of recipes Louisianans can reference for ideas. Stuff like nutria chili, nutria jambalaya, smoked nutria, nutria gumbo, and nutria ice cream. 
Oh, look. This is a baby Kodamundi. Or maybe it's an adult. I can't tell. These guys are cool. They're related to raccoons. They eat fruits, veggies, snails, frogs, lizards, birds, and other small things. So it sounds like they have a healthy diet. Here's what they sound like. You can find these cute mammals in the Southwest. People hunt Kodamundi for their fur. Hey, guys, let's stop hunting Kodamundis. They're cute. Bye, Kodamundi. Have you ever heard of a hellbender? Now you have. This is a giant salamander. Some people call them mud puppies. People on the East Coast know about these. Folks in Kentucky probably eat them for dinner. These guys are almost extinct. They live in rocky streams. They're kind of a living fossil. Their relatives go back 160 million years. They don't attack people and they don't make a cool noise. Bye, hellbender. Now that thing was ugly, but this is cute. This is a jaguarundi. They're not jaguars. They're more of a mini cougar or like a puma, but they are cats. They're about two and a half feet long and they eat rodents. This guy lives in Texas, New Mexico, and in Arizona. I don't know their exact street, but somewhere in this general area. Look at the babies, they look like kittens. They've been called the perfect predators. Some are gray, some are brown, some are black, some are yellow, some are red, just like people. Apparently they're super smart and nimble and fairly timid, not like people. But anyways, you might have a hard time spotting one. They don't come out very much. They're being threatened because people are building homes in their habitat. They aren't really hunted, but sometimes they get caught in traps meant for other animals. Here's what they sound like in case you hear one. Ooh, they sound kind of mean, actually. Maybe even cuter than that is the ring-tailed cat or ringtail. Look at this thing. These aren't really cats, but they're closely related to the raccoon. They're kind of like foxes too, I guess. They kind of sound like dogs though with their loud barking. Take a listen. They live mostly in the south central part of the country, parts of California and mostly in deserts. They can see really well and hear really well and climb really well. Apparently they like climbing on cactuses or cacti. I think that's how it's pronounced. And they have a huge appetite. They'll eat just about anything that crosses their path as long as it's the right size. So look out mice and lizards and insects. Owls and coyotes eat them. They're about two feet long and weigh only about two pounds. Bye, ringtail. And that's it. A list of random weird animals that you may have never even heard of that live right alongside us here in the US. If you're lucky enough to have spotted one, that's cool. If not, maybe one day you'll be lucky enough to spot one. Except the lamprey eel. You don't want to see one of those, especially attached to your leg. Animals, 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 animals. Some are so cute, some are so mean. They are so weird, they are so strange. We just learned about them, animals are crazy. We just learned about them, animals are so strange. Some of them will not try to hurt you. Some of them are small and they're so cute. Some of them are big and they're ugly. Some of them are mean and they'll bite you. Rah! Hey guys, if you learned something new or you just like this video, make sure to like it. And if you really like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get all of our videos about what it's like to live in different places in America. Peace.